Hello. It's March already somehow. Time truly flies and it's horrifying. Uh, but that means it's time to talk about all the books that were in February, which is exciting and fun. Okay. I actually read a lot in February. Like I read six books and they were pretty good. <laughs> I didn't dislike any of them. So I am going to, let's just go in order of when I started them. So we begin with Clark and Division by Naomi Hirahara. This was an audiobook, and this was a murder mystery and historical fiction. Basically, um, a family in Los Angeles is put into an internment camp because they're Japanese, right, during World War II. And, but it turns out, because I, I mean, I don't know a ton about the history of the internment camps. It turns out that there was a program where some of these people could, could leave and get jobs in another city if they got like permission for this. And so the daughter, the older daughter goes to Chicago and she gets a job and then she arranges for the rest of her family to come join her like a year later or something. So the main character is the younger sister. But once they arrive in Chicago, the minute they get there, they find out that her sister, the fucking day before, was hit by one of the subway trains and killed. Um, and everyone's like, guess it was an accident, because like these things happen fairly often, especially back then. Um, and it's only the younger sister, Aki, who is convinced that Rose, the older sister, you know, would never have like jumped in front of a train uh, because the coroner is saying it looks like suicide. Like she jumped in front of the train. Um, he, she, she's just thinking like she would never do that. She must have been pushed and I'm going to figure out what happened. So yeah, this book was fine. <laughs> okay. Um, it was interesting to read about the Japanese Americans, especially like once they got to Chicago, like in Chicago, that community, how they were living their lives in this time period when the war was still going on. Um, and, you know, from this perspective of a, oh, how did the second generation, I guess, Japanese American, um, her parents are the ones who actually came from Japan. So they're known as Nisei, these second generation, like born in America, Japanese Americans. Uh, so they use that word a lot. <laughs> it was interesting. But, um, you know, she gets to know a number of people in Chicago and she gets a job at the Newberry Library, which is very, very cool, I thought. And there's obviously, you know, an attempt to make it kind of like, this is very Chicago. Like they live at Clark, like this, this train station's at Clark and Division. And like she works at the Newberry and like there's all these neighborhoods that they go to. And at one point, um, anyway, the setting was moderately interesting. The book was pretty slow, honestly. Like, it, I would say it leaned more to historical fiction than a murder mystery. Like, yes, it's a mystery. Yes, she talks to some people. Yes, she's trying to figure out what's going on and eventually does figure out what was going on. And there's a couple of different layers to it. Um, but it takes a long time to get there. So it was fine. It was a little bit boring, I guess. Um, but I, I just, I saw that title and was like, that's in Chicago, Clark and Division. I must read it because I have Chicago brain rot. I don't know. <sighs> All right, so read that, it was fine. Then I read Bad Gays, A Homosexual History by Hugh Lemmy and Ben Miller. This was a book that I was very much looking forward to. So, I mean, it's what it says it is, right? It's a, it's, it's, it's a history book, it's nonfiction. Uh, and I've been wanting to read it since I discovered it existed last year when it came out, basically. Um, I guess these guys have a podcast of the same name, which I have not listened to. Um, so the premise of this book is basically, the authors want to talk about a number of people in history who were some shade of queer, they're, well, I'll, I'll define that better in a second, but they basically they spend the whole introduction talking about what do they mean by bad gays, right? And 
a lot of time, like basically what they're saying is that a lot of times when we, the queer community, look back on history, we want to talk about like the more heroic characters. We want to talk about people who like change the world for the better. But in this book, they want to talk about people who had a an impact one way or another in different ways, but like not necessarily great people all the time. Whether now, I mean, you know, they admit that not everybody in the book is necessarily like a bad person. Some of them definitely are. Uh, there were some Nazis in this book, um, and some of them are just more troubled, or they just have complicated relationships with like imperialism simply by dint of being British, I guess. Like stuff like that. So it's complicated what bad means. And what gay means is also complicated by the fact that these are all people from history, right? Like, some of them from quite long ago, most of them from not as long ago, but still. When the concept of homosexual for a lot of these people in their time periods simply didn't exist because that's not the way people thought about stuff, right? So it's like, it's complex. And then also like, how do you point at an historical figure from you know several hundred years ago and say that person was gay like how could you do that actually because they wouldn't call themselves that for one thing it was really interesting though like i definitely learned a lot um it was predominantly about people that i think we would define as white gay men from history uh but that was sort of the point of the book there was one woman shout out to margaret mead and shout out to like the two people he talked about that were not white but two was it two it was at least one <laughs> i don't remember the whole rundown or the whole list um my favorite historical figure actually had a chapter in this book which i was not expecting uh t.e lawrence um yo whatever anyway i'm obsessed with him it's fine it's fine i we can talk about more him, more about him in a second, but um, I just had I had I had some critiques of that chapter, but I will keep it brief by saying basically just that I didn't like that they called the chapter Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> like I understand that that's the name that people are going to recognize, but like it isn't his name. It's just like a. It's like a nickname. It's like a, obviously it's not his name, right? And then all of the other people in the book, most of whom I'd never heard of, their chapters are titled with their names, with the exception of the bad gays of Weimar Berlin. But like, that's a collective, right? And then poor old T.E. Lawrence has to be called Lawrence of Arabia. And I'm like, <laughs> just the disrespect. It's fine. It does not matter. It just bothers me a little bit. That's all. Uh, I feel like there was another complaint that I wanted to bring up and I should have written it down somewhere because I don't remember what it was. You know, where I was like, this is one thing that I'll, and I don't, I don't remember what it was. Fuck. Because this was like, I read this book, you know, several weeks ago now and don't remember what I was thinking about. Um, anyway, it was a good book. That is for sure. Like, um... It definitely was. I I really enjoyed it. Like, yes, yes. And I think it I think it does a good job of also just giving you kind of a picture of some of these, you know, historical figures of varying degrees of well knownity or importance, right? Some of them were royalty and the most of them were just guys. But how in different periods of history there were different communities or there were different just like the ways that people thought about themselves were, were different because the first person they talk about the oldest person they talk about was because it's in chronological order uh was H the emperor hadrian who famously had this boyfriend right but like whose name i can't fucking pronounce and to and and, ten and and anyway not even gonna try he had this boyfriend so like okay right but that was so long ago and so it was just interesting to start there and, and just you know talk about like you know how how are things different in the past but also how do these different time periods connect to one another like you had men from you know the early 20th century or the late 19th century 
looking back on the relationships with the ancient Greeks, which Hadrian was also connected to and looking at, looking back on at least a little bit, like just not as far, right? Um, and like how that shaped the way they were conceptualizing or conducting their relationships. Anyway, let's move on though, but it was good, it was good, it was good. Um, next I read The Wonderful, The Delightful Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. I am continuing my reread of The Expanse. Again, I don't feel like I need to go on about this book uh, too much um, because I have talked about it before. Obviously, this was a few years ago, but still. Like, okay. Caliban's War, delightful, wonderful. We meet Bobby, we meet Avasarla. There's just like more characters, there's more places, there's more going on. I thought it was great. <laughs> um, I think it has a superficial similarity in some of the plot. Like basically the idea that, oh, there's this girl missing and we're going to look for her. Like the missing person thing, the kind of trying to navigate while all these like wild things are happening like at higher levels. But in this book, it's a lot like the first book in that sense. But in this book, we have a better idea of what's going on. And also we actually have more perspectives of people who are connected to other parts of like what's, what's happening. Avasarla, especially because she is actually like the undersecretary to the secretary of something or other, right? Like she's in the government. She's an important person um, relatively. And I fucking love her, by the way. Like, I love her so much. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy to have continued my reread. Um, and sad because I'm pretty sure Avasarla is not in the next couple of books. And I don't think Bobby's in in the next one at least. Like, yeah, I, I forget when she comes back, but I'm pretty sure book three doesn't have either of them, which is horribly depressing because they're my favorites. Um, but that's okay. All right, I love book three, but Caliban's War, book two, it's great. I mean, what can I say? Like, there's action, there's drama, there's Holden, like, kind of losing it and Naomi being like, you have to get your shit together, bro, or I'm leaving. I, li I thought that was especially interesting from the perspective of a reread, because now I'm like, I know her backstory now and I know why she's like, we're cutting this off. We're not fucking doing this. As soon as he gets like a little bit unhinged, she's like, no, not again. <laughs> uh, we learn more about also Amos's backstory in this book. Um, a little tiny bit, basically as much as we ever do. Right. Uh, and I, I love Amos in this book, his, you know, that he's got kind of this motivation that he really wants to save this kid for like, personal reasons and uh, I love it. I love Amos. Like, I can't talk enough about how much I love all these characters but if you have to go with like the, the four main characters who are on the Rocinante, Amos is my favorite because I just he's fucked up and I love it. Yeah fantastic fantastic book. Okay now we come to okay well actually the other three books I actually have with me because they're all from the library. I just haven't returned them yet um, because I'm just read. I just finished them like pretty recently. So we're going to talk about a big fucking <laughs> biography. Uh, a Prince of Our Disorder, The Life of T.E. Lawrence by John E. Mack. Told ya I'd be talking about him again. Okay. Oh boy. This was a good book. Um, oh, actually. Okay. First of all, I want to it's falling apart and that makes me so sad. I'm gonna have to go to the library, like gently place this in a librarian's hands and be like, I'm sorry, but a full quarter of this book is coming off. Um, it's actually not attached except by this tape. My theory is that nobody has read this since it came out in the 70s and, and the library got it. Okay, I wanna show you a picture though, because I just one picture, because I wanted to show you my favorite picture of Lawrence that is in this book. Um, it's this picture. He's the one uh, in the darker suit. I love this picture. It makes me happy. Anyway, okay. Sorry. So, it is a biography. I mean, beginning, middle, and end. Uh, with some analysis by this guy who wrote it, who uh, talks about... Fuck. He's a psychiatrist. 
Um, he's not like sitting down like, let's armchair diagnose this dead man, but he is a little bit like s talking about kind of psych, psych <laughs> about like, you know, the way that a person acts is a result of the way that they think and the way that they think and conceptualize themselves as a result of things that have happened to them in the place that they live in, blah, 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 and, and whatever. So stuff like that. It was interesting. Um, and he had an interesting life. Um, which I knew, you know, parts of pretty well. Like, I've read his books, so I'm pretty aware of what he was doing <clears throat> in the war, especially. But I, you know, I was like, well, how did he get there? Like, what was he even doing there? Uh, why did he know, you know, I had a vague idea of stuff like, oh, he was an archaeologist or something. So, like, <clears throat> I learned more about that. I learned about his family. I learned about, like, that he mostly grew, most, mostly grew up in Oxford. You know, like, what he, he studied in school. Why he was in Turkey. The various, like, travelings that he did just kind of, like, by himself or with his friend on their bikes. Um, and then what he did when the war started, um, which led to him being in British intelligence in Cairo. And then that was a couple of years of just that kind of stuff. And then, then he gets involved in the Arab revolt. Then there's a whole bunch of chapters about that. And, um, you know, not just, I appreciate Mac, Mac, is it Dr. Mac? I mean, I guess not. Mr. <laughs> Professor Mac here. Uh, I appreciate him being like, look, we're not going to talk about every single thing he did in the war because, like, other people have written books about that. We do not have time. Um, but, you know, talking about the general gist of it and then focusing on a couple of specifically pretty traumatizing, like, events. And then what he did afterwards, like, when he was connected to, like, um, Churchill and um, talking about, like, well, where, where are we... He had this whole, like, he really didn't want France to take over Syria, and that was, like, his entire motive. He was just, like, not, he didn't want that to happen. Um, you know, what did he, what did he want? What were his motivations? And then, when he decides that he's going to join the RAF, he wants to be just, um, a serviceman. He wants to just, like, do that, right? That, that's, I thought was interesting. Um, so a lot of the sources in the book are letters that he wrote or um also interviews that the author did with a lot of people who knew him because of course like i said this was published in the 70s did i say this was published in the 70s and it took him like 10 years of research um so he was able to talk to a lot of a lot of people who actually knew lawrence um and that was interesting uh, I have a, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about it, which I'm just gonna like, we're not gonna get into it. We're not gonna get into it, but I did think it was very interesting. I still have questions. Um, there's still stuff that I'm curious about, but like, I think there's a degree to which you have to go, all right, well, you're never gonna find out, okay? That's just not, everybody in question, you know, is dead now, and it was a long time ago. Um... But yeah, I mean, even just his years in the service, and I was curious about that too. Like, how did he get in? Why did he get kicked out? How did he get back in? Um, and then that's basically it. Like, two two months after his retirement from the RAF, because you can only serve for a certain amount of time, um, he died. He got in his motorcycle accident. I learned he didn't like to wear helmets, but I guess I already knew that. Um, yeah, it was a good book. It was like I've been wanting to read some biography of him so that I can kind of piece all the bits that I already know together. And this did the job admirably. And um Yeah. It was good. He was a weird person. But like, aren't we all? Um and he wrote so many letters. Ugh, all right, so enough. I will stop. I will stop now. <sighs> okay. And then I was like, fuck, 
I am never gonna read 70 books this year at this rate. So I was like, let's read some shorter books, how about? So then I read Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. Yeah, baby, oh my God, don't be shiny. So this is Murder, Murderbot, Murderbot Diaries book four, or novella four. Tiny little thing, isn't it? This was fine. <laughs> like, no, excuse me. I like this whole series, but as usual, my complaint is that I don't feel like I come away from it knowing the other characters. Murderbot, I understand this character, I do. We've spent enough time with it. We know what, it, what its deal is. Other characters who only appear in one or two of these books, I know, you know, much less about as characters. Um, but every book at least has a couple of scenes where you're like, oh my god, Murderbot. Um, and this did not disappoint in that aspect, uh, but I just like wasn't that it attached to it, wasn't that like, um, you know, wasn't really feeling like that into it. Uh, however, I believe that after this, we get the, um, the actual full-length novels in the series, like the rest of the series is full-length novels, which is good because uh, hopefully that'll, you know, more time for just piecing it all, to, like just giving me more, giving me more of what I want so that I can be more connected to the plot line. And finally, I read A Lot's Away, it's heavy, by Darcy Little Badger. Um, this one, this puppy, is a young adult book. Honestly, it, it almost reads a scotch younger than that. Like, it, not really, but like, I've read a variety of young adult and this is definitely one of the runs that, that reads a little younger and it also just generally is deal maybe dealing with things that are a little, uh, I don't know, people die. So maybe that's not accurate to say, but it's just that like, there are vampires and there's murder and, and there's bad things happening, there's scary ghosts, but I didn't feel like any of it was that dark, if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, wow, um, what is this about? This is about a girl, okay, so it's like a fantasy world, which is our world, except everybody has, mag has, a, has little magic powers, like everyone can do a little something. And this girl knows how to raise ghosts. And she basically just does it with her pet dog who died a few years ago. But it's something that's been passed down through generations of her family. She is Lipan Apache and her sixth great, sixth great grandmother, uh, you know, was like this, almost this figure of myth and legend. I, I'm not sure, they tell, they tell a bunch of stories about her. I'm not sure if these are stories Darcy Little Badger straight up made up herself or if this is like somehow connected to some actual mythology. Um, I mean, I think it's probably not, but it could be. Maybe it's supposed to be in the style of, I don't know. But it was, it was cool. And they're, they're in Texas. Um, so what happens is her cousin dies in a car accident and she has a dream that his ghost comes to her and is like, a lot's away, or Ellie, um, I was murdered by this guy. Look, at, look up this guy. And so she tells her, her parents or her dad and he's like, okay, we'll look into this. Um, and so she starts looking into this, this mysterious, guy who turns out to be a doctor and I did predict um what his magic power was pretty quickly like some some number of pages before the characters got there basically as soon as we got the there's a part where um her friend's aunt does like a there's a part where her friend's aunt does like a psychic reading on the place where uh, they think he died and then they find where he actually died because it turns out him and his car were moved. That's mysterious. Um, and anyway, from that point I was like, oh, oh, I, I know what it is now. And I was correct. So I'm just tooting my own horn a little bit there. But, um, you know, it was a pretty good book. Um, it was on my radar, I think from Books and Lala, definitely from Books and Lala. But I heard somebody say at some point that 
Ellie, the main character, is asexual, so I was like, I gotta read it. And uh, she was, so, you know, it was not important to the story, it was just a fact about the character, but there you go. Um, oh yeah, I thought it was, I thought it had some kind of cool things with, like, you know, the idea of everybody having a little bit of magic. History doesn't seem to be particularly different. Um, I think just because the idea is that the magic's not very major. It feels like the biggest thing is that if you're somehow related to the fairies or whatever the fuck, uh, you can go through fairy rings instead of flying on a plane or driving. That's kind of cool, except that Ellie and her family aren't related <laughs> to these fairy folk, so they have to take regular transportation. But it definitely helps her friend and his aunt and whoever, like, uh, and his sister and like other characters like actually get there to South Texas uh, from where they live in Northern Texas uh, really quickly when needed for the plot. So that's nice. Um, but it was kind of a, a cool touch. Uh, I liked just the kind of creepy aspects of the town of Willoughby and just like how weird it is that there's just all these mushrooms and it's like really green even though they're in fucking South Texas. Um, you know, they're like, they're like by the Rio Grande. Like nothing is green there, so is my understanding, I don't know. Uh, according to the book. So, um, it was good. It was. And, yeah. So, I think February was a successful reading month for sure. Um, you know, I, I generally liked everything I read. I would say my least favorite was probably Clark and Division. Everything else was good. I either learned a lot or it was at least like, you know, some entertainment to quickly pass a few days. Um, and, you know, six books isn't bad. So uh, yeah, my goal is to read 70 this year. So like, we'll see if that even happens. I am kind of perpetually behind at least one since early and like honestly since halfway through January. So that's not good, right? <laughs> that's not good news, but um, hopefully I don't do too bad. Um, yeah. I think we're good. I think we are. I think I will see you all the next time I see you which might be at the end of March. Maybe it'll be sooner. I keep telling myself I'm gonna make more videos and then I don't, but you know, there's still time. There's a possibility, maybe, oop, don't kick that. Maybe I will, but until then, uh, peace and read some good books.